so we were talking about the national testing agency and this screenshot or news article is of 8th of june 2019 the hindu newspaper we will be needing to cover only this point now which i feel is important that national testing agency would be conducting what all the tests so jee mains is there neat is there for mbbs and bds except aims and jip mer so this is a bit of a different thing but again aims is something which is not undertaking admission through neat but again you people can google on your own although this newspaper is of june 2019 i, I don't think there has been any further development onto this part now but again all right so cmat is something that again and neat is doing gpat is there ugc net is there nchm je is there and delhi university 170 plus ug courses pg courses mphil phd programs are there only one point was different that neat is taking so net is conducting neat for admission to the educational institutions with regard to the doctor courses but here except aims and jip mer is our keyword so this is the only thing that we have to cover from here and of course the need is basically national testing agency nta is basically an autonomous organization and self-sustaining agency this we have already covered and this is the last second pib now not very important but we just have to cover it because we can just leave anything so herein we are to talk about a few things and this is this Ministry of Corporate Affairs introduces the company's Fresh Start Scheme 2020 and revise the Limited Liability Partnership Settlement Scheme 2020. So companies, we know what the companies are and Limited Liability Partnership is also something. So basically, it's like if two people have joined together, come together to start an enterprise and they have entered a partnership and that partnership would be either unlimited or limited largely in present time we don't have unlimited partnership because unlimited partnership means if anything goes wrong if your business goes bankrupt and then even the personal asset of the partners would be sold off to recover the money to pay off the creditors but this is something which is not acceptable to anybody so then came the concept of limited liability partnership herein it simply means that if anything goes wrong the liability of the partner are limited to their share into the venture venture and partnership and companies these are the words that cannot be used interchangeably because everybody everything is different but again we really don't need to do any sort of phd here largely what limited liability partnership means it simply means that the uh, the liability onto the partners is limited to the extent of their initial shares or onto the onto the agreement per se Personal assets would not be sold off to pay off the debt creditors if anything goes wrong. That's what it means. Although this is not important, nothing is important from this very PIB, but still we have to cover it because in 2019 exam, very, very insignificant things were asked. So here in the ministry has stated that these companies and the limited liability partnership, they really don't need to file a lot of things which are to be filed under MCA 21 rules because we know covid 19 pandemic is there so government has provided relief to even farmers even to customers normal general people who cannot pay back the loan so similar treatment has been given out to the companies and limited liability partners as well but still intuitive explanation is not enough let's just read it now so here in ministry is stating that it's really really boring but we just have to cover it Fresh start scheme and modified LLP settlement scheme incentivizes compliance and reduce compliance burden during the unprecedented public health situation caused by COVID-19. The USP or the good point of both the scheme is one-time waiver of additional filing fees for delayed filings by the companies or LLPs with the registrar of companies during the currency of the scheme that is during the period from 1st April 2020 to 30th of September 2020. The scheme, apart from giving longer timelines for corporates to comply with the various filing requirements under the company 2013 and 2018, significantly reduce the related financial burden on them, especially for those with long-standing defaults, thereby giving them an opportunity to make a fresh start. 
Both the scheme also contain provision for giving immunity from penal proceedings including imposition of penalty for late submission and also providing additional time for filing appeals before the concerned registrar director against imposition of penalties if already imposed. So that's it. Just one point again is here that the provision is immunity from only the things that are to be filed under MCA 21 because we're talking about the Ministry of Corporate Affairs here. But if company is to comply with any other law and that too very good one and it is undertaking substantial violation then of course penalty would be levied. There is no doubt about this but this was not important still we have covered it. Now this is important and this is what? This is with regard to government giving benefits to farmers on crop loan repayments due to COVID-19 lockdown. So what is it? So we know government of India provides interest subvention to the farmers to the tune of some percentage. We'll see what the percentage is but not here because this PIB has explained this thing in a very in a better manner. So let's just go through it now. So basically interest subvention scheme for farmers is there. Interest means interest. If you have taken a loan from the bank then you are bound to pay some additional amount onto the principal amount. We just call it interest. Subvention means government would be paying some percentage of it right and for farmers means for farmers. So it is available for agricultural credit as well as against Kisan credit card. All right. So either way farmers are to pay 7% per annum as a interest to the bank. Here either way government is providing 2% interest subvention. So it would have been 9% but because 2% interest subvention is right there without any condition attached. Only condition is that it has to be as agricultural credit or loan availed onto the Kisan credit card. You can't take loan for any other purpose and then expect any sort of benefit under interest subvention scheme no because this thing happened the farmers they really don't know much about these schemes so they end up getting the loans which is not as per this very scheme so here ethics comes into picture but maybe we are deviating now so effectively seven percent per annum farmer would be paying without any condition attached and here in two percent interest subvention is there by the government of india but if farmer is paying back this amount on a regular interval on a timely manner then government of India would be providing additional 3% as the interest subvention and in this very manner effective rate of interest for farmer would be just 4% per annum. So all right so let's just go through it once again interest subvention to the tune of 2% either way so farmer has to pay 4% 7% but if repayment is on time bound manner then additional 3% again by the government and then farmer has to effectively only pay 4% per annum as an interest rate and this is it now who is implementing this very scheme this too is important so if one is taking loan from the public sector banks or the private sector banks then RBI would be reimbursing these banks. So we can say implementing agency is the RBI. But if one is taking loan from the regional rural banks and the cooperative banks, then NABAR would come into picture. Here NABAR would be reimbursing these regional rural banks and the cooperatives. So we can say RBI and the NABAR are the implementing agency. So this is it. So we have dealt with this very thing as well. Now we are on to, so we are done with the PIBs of 31st and 30th of March 2020. There is just one clarification with regard to yesterday's PIB, which is stating that, which was about definitely this very thing, Sathi, and full form of Sathi was sophisticated, analytical and technical help institutes. We have already dealt with this very thing. Only one clarification there was to give here in PIB has again mentioned that it is under Ministry of Earth and Sciences and I really don't know why because clearly DST has launched this and as per this and either way we know this thing that Department of Science and Technology is under Ministry of Science and Technology and here we can say it clearly. So DST launches Sathi initiative for building shared professionally managed strong science and technology infrastructure and Department of Science and Technology is under Ministry of Science and Technology, it's right here. So 
maybe it is not very important because many of the websites who are into UPSC preparation they have mentioned they have just mentioned Sathi initiative by Department of Science and Technology ministry's name has not been mentioned and either way DST is under Ministry of Science and Technology so maybe we really don't need to think much about this it could be a part or error on the part of PIB but either way we're done with the 31st and 30th of March 2020 PIB thank you so much for watching and good